Hi everyone, it's Rachel back with the Shades of Orange and I'm here once again to bring you more of the best of the best of 2021. This time I'm talking about science fiction published in this current year and it has been a fantastic year for science fiction so I have 10 great books to talk about. If you missed any of my previous videos I will have a playlist listed in the cards and description box including my backlist science fiction which means any books published prior to 2021. But I have some really good books to recommend to you all and I can't wait to share them with you so let's get started. First, at number 10, we have Project Hail Mary by Andy Weir, and this follows a man who wakes up on a ship with very little memory. He is surrounded by a couple of corpses and finds himself on an intelligent ship. Slowly, his memory starts to return, and he realizes that he is on a mission to save the world. I think most people, even if you haven't read this book, are aware of it, so I didn't want to go too far into the synopsis, but a lot of you will probably be surprised that this book is so far down on my list, but it did make a spot, it just wasn't my favorite of the year. And that's the fact that I did find it to be a little bit of a copycat of The Martian, which I absolutely loved. One of my favorite books right over there. But if I'm honest, I feel like Andy Weir kind of wrote that story again and sort of played off the success. And so I did feel like it wasn't necessarily adding anything new. And the main character did remind me a lot of Mark Watney, but just not as interesting, a little bit less likable, and just a little bit more immature. But regardless of that, there's some really good banter, some great humor, and I really enjoyed the inclusion of so much science. It's always told in a way that I think is very accessible to a lay person, but made for a really fun story. So it was very fun and enjoyable, just wasn't quite the wow five-star experience that other people had, and it just, I think, depends on how you feel about The Martian and science fiction in general, but I overall enjoyed it. it again, it made a spot on my list, just not quite at the top like a lot of other people, I suspect, are going to be placing it a lot higher on their list. Then moving on to number nine, we have The Fallen by Ada Hoffman. This is technically the second book in the Outside series, so I do recommend reading that one first. But this is set in a universe where artificial intelligence have become so advanced that they have basically become like overlords to the humans. So this is science fiction, but it also involves cosmic horror, and it's just a very unique story. I will say that I didn't completely love book one, or at least I didn't completely connect to the stories and characters, but I was intrigued enough that I really wanted to keep going with the series, and I'm so glad I did, because book two, wow, this one just pulled me right in. The character work was fantastic. There's own voices representation for a neurodiverse autistic character, and I love that representation. It really hit home in the second book, and the story was very engaging. It's a story of rebellion, again, of these humans trying to fight against these oppressors. If you want to read this book, I do recommend you have to go back to the beginning, but it's well worth reading The Outside in order to get to The Fallen, which was fantastic. Then at number eight, we have Clara and the Sun by Kaju Ishiguro. And this is a story told from the perspective of a companion doll, specifically an artificial intelligent companion doll, who is bought by a young girl. And the story follows her, the relationship with the daughter as well as the mother, and you get to have their perspective on humanity. And I've heard other people argue that this book is not exactly revolutionary in terms of AI fiction, and I will acknowledge that certainly the classics have been done before, and I don't think it necessarily brings anything new to that conversation. However, as a piece of soft science fiction, as literary science fiction, I thought this book was beautiful. The writing was fantastic, and the messaging, the themes, were just just what I was looking for at the time, I'll be honest. I thought it was just very compelling. And again, I think that this book is less of a reflection on what artificial intelligence might grow into in the future, but instead having that outside perspective looking onto humanity and what it is like to be human, what makes us humans, the decisions we make. And those conversations were, again, very compelling for me. This book would have gotten higher on the list had I liked the ending more, but I did find it a little bit underwhelming, but still a really beautiful story and I definitely want to read more by this beloved literary author and I hope he continues to write in the science fiction genre. Then at number seven, we have We Are Satellites by Sarah Pinsker. This is set in a near future where there is brain implant technology that allows people to enhance their brain and processing power in order to be more efficient at work, at school, and in their day-to-day -day lives. And the story is told from the perspective of the various family members of this one family unit with two mothers and a biological and adopted daughter and son. And so within this family, you get to follow each of the characters as they make a decision whether or not to get the brain implant. But in some cases, that decision is actually made for them because they have pre-existing medical conditions that make them ineligible. And so it really 
has that conversation about whether or not people should have the technology introduce what that would look like because it definitely feels like something that is possible to come in the future but more so it really talks about the privilege and the class systems that might arise if some technology like this were to exist because those that are not eligible to get the brain implants or would simply choose not to be are left behind and so I love the conversations around that how it divides the family how it affects each of the individual members and it just creates some really good conversations at the heart of the story it's really about family and it's very emotional particularly I connected with the parent perspectives and the idea of wanting to make sure that your child is not left behind to give them every advantage but then at the same time not wanting to push them into something that you may or may not be comfortable yourself I just thought it was a great conversation really nuanced a great character work and again if you love that more soft science where it's less focused on the inner workings of the technology but instead taking technology and seeing how it would affect our future our lives and just create some really good conversations around that I definitely recommend this one and then just missing out on the top five and number six we have refraction by wick welker this is a fantastic standalone sci-fi thriller that i read earlier this year and cannot stop gushing about this story is told from multiple perspectives we have one of a professor in the 1980s who is creating this technology or the ability to have very fast travel in space we also get the perspective of pilots who are living and working on mars and then we have another perspective of a later mayor who is an artificial intelligence who is actually running the Martian colony of the future and within this story that various characters seem to hear voices they might be going crazy there might be something else going on and eventually you start to see how everything is connected together what is happening I love the reveals this story just pulled me right in it was so compelling I was invested in all three of the perspectives and I had to read it twice this year because once was not enough I think that it was imaginative I think that it pulled from real scientific ideas but definitely brought into a way that just felt fantastical and again imaginative and creative and a little bit different and so I do recommend this one I feel like it's not as well known as some of the other books I'm talking about on this list so if you want one that in my opinion is a hidden gem I highly recommend giving this one a try. I think it's great for people who love things like dark matter. And if you're just looking for that fast, easy read that despite the length, you will just fly through this book, this is definitely one. And like I said, it just missed out on my top five. I almost had it in there, but I just had to shuffle the list and this is where it ended up at the time of filming, but oh so close. Then into my official top five, we have Shards of Earth by Adrian Tchaikovsky, which is the first book in a new trilogy by him. This is a space opera told in a future where these ancient powerful aliens have come to earth and they have basically destroyed the earth they reconstructed it in a way to make this beautiful object but in doing so it destroyed the planet made it inhabitable and so the remaining humans have to go on the run to other colonies and to escape however these architect aliens continue to follow them and reconstruct their new colonies and planets along the way and this is once again a book that i had to read twice this year and upon a second read it definitely had to get pushed up the list because it is such a epic immersive story the ideas behind this future universe are incredible i was so compelled by the aliens and i'm just so excited to see where a series like this will go while it's not as character focused the ideas behind the book is just what pulled me into the story and i just like i said desperately want more so if you are someone who loves the tropes of science fiction this is not one for beginners but one that you really want to build towards because i do think that adrian Tchaikovsky is a really brilliant writer and I just cannot recommend this one enough. I'm really excited to see more from this trilogy and just yeah see what direction it's going to go from here. Then at number four we have Day Zero by C. Robert Cargill and this is set in a near future where we are told the story from the perspective of a companion robot who's tasked with caring for a young boy. At the beginning of the story there is a robot uprising and so this robot nanny has to decide whether or not to to follow their own programming and protect this boy in this future world or will he follow along with the other robots and uprise and get his freedom this book is highly emotional it is very character driven and it really pulled on my heartstrings which i did not expect from a robot book but oh my goodness i loved it it is clear that the author is a huge fan of Isaac asimov because i think there's a lot of nods to that original story or collection of iRobot and of course he makes references to the robot 
laws, but I do think that this book is very good for people that are newer to science fiction because it's told in a very accessible way. And while it is so character focused, it also has a really good narrative pace. It's very action packed. It almost reads like a action movie, but I don't mean that in a negative way. I really think that this book has it all. Like I said, it has those intelligent conversations, great characters, and a story that is going to move along very quickly. It just feels very cinematic. It feels very epic in scale. And yet the story is told in such an intimate, manner that you can't help but care very deeply for the main characters and the decisions they have to make. It's just harrowing and there are just moments where my heart was in my stomach and I just loved it a lot. I think that it's just one I want to recommend again to those that are newer to science fiction but also those that already love the genre, especially those that love artificial intelligence as much as I do. So highly recommend. It definitely earned a spot in my top four. Then at number three we have The Elder Race of by Adrian Tchaikovsky, and this is a sci-fi novella that is on a planet where there is a group of people that are in somewhat a medieval style age. We follow this young woman who is going off to seek the help of this great elder who is supposed to be this magical being that can hopefully help her on her quest and needs. And we also get the perspective of an anthropologist who is watching over this planet, and he is just there to observe, and so you get to see how everything connects together. I I really encourage you to go into this book without knowing too much more because for me the surprise of how everything fits together was what made this book so enjoyable. But I gotta say that this book reads like fantasy at the beginning but it definitely is science fiction. I always say I'm much more of a science fiction reader and it definitely hit home once the story got going. I was like okay this is why it's classified as sci-fi. I am here for this and I am ready for it. This book I would compare to something like Star Trek The Next Generation and it just has to do with the fact again that you have this person who is an outside observer trying to watch over this planet without trying to affect their development and the way the story is structured the narrative of it is so smart and I just really want people to try this one out. I think it's very accessible to newer readers. And at the same time, I just think it's one of the most well-plotted little novellas I've read in a very long time. Completely surprised me. I picked up this book with no expectations and it really just blew away any preconceived ideas I had about what this book was going to be about. So highly recommend it. You just got to check it out for yourself. So hopefully I enticed a few of you to do that. Then at number two, we have Light Chaser by Peter F. Hamilton and Gareth Powell. And this is again a sci-fi novella. This is set in a future where we follow a traveler who is alone on her ship with just her artificial intelligence companion to keep her company. And she has been doing this for ages and has kind of lost track of time. She goes around collecting the memories of different planets and making sure that their stories are going to be told over the course of the millennia. And the story is very epic in scale but then within the story you find out that there's something more going on there's a bit of a mystery and a twist and I loved it again I thought this book was so smart the plotting the narrative the characters everything just came together perfectly for me again a book I read twice because once was not enough and I absolutely love it definitely want to read more by both of these authors and would love to see more because despite this being a teeny tiny novella the world building within here was incredible. I can't believe how much they packed into such a little package and I would definitely love to see more people reading it themselves. And finally, we've made it to the number one spot. I don't know if you can guess, but yes, Leviathan Falls by James S.A. Corey, the ninth and final book in The Expanse, made the top of my list. I did a separate video talking all about it, including a spoilery discussion for those of you that have finished it and want to talk about it more. I will have that linked in the cards and description, but here I'm going to keep it all very spoiler free. I will say it was a really epic conclusion to one of my all-time favorite space opera series, and it definitely left me thinking. After filming my video I spent days just thinking about this book and it definitely left me in a huge reading slump. It took me a while to figure out what to read next and I ended up doing a whole video on the topic but if you are someone who has not started the series I encourage you to do so. It's very accessible to beginners and if you're someone who is somewhere along the way maybe you read two or three books and just got distracted and picked up other things please go back and finish out the series. It is complete. It is satisfying. It is epic. You will fall in love with the characters. It is so enjoyable. It's it's like coming back and spending time with my best friends and I just cannot gush about this book enough. The ending, honestly, the final book was not quite perfect for me, but despite that, 
it was so good and I can't criticize it here. I just want to again gush and really encourage all of you to finish out the series and just yeah enjoy spending more time with the characters. So that's it. We've made it to the end of the video here of the books I talked about. Love to hear which ones you are planning on checking out in the coming year. I would also love to hear what was your favorite science fiction book published in 2021. If you're new to my channel please consider subscribing. I do read a lot of adult science fiction, fantasy, horror, and thrillers and I really do try to focus as much as possible on those new releases so I can give you the reviews on which ones are worth the hype. You can also help me out by giving this video a thumbs up, sharing it around online, and if you hit that little notification bell, you'll never miss a video from me. Thank you so much for watching. I'll talk to you again soon. Okay, bye-bye.